Welcome back uh, to New York City. I'm Matthew Bunsen, executive editor for EWTN News and also Washington Bureau Chief. And this is the 2022 Principled Entrepreneurship Conference uh, from the Catholic University of America's Bush School and also the Napa Institute. I'm joined, as I promised, uh, by Andrew Abella, the dean of the Bush School. Andrew, uh, Dr. Abella, I should say more properly, thank you first for, for joining me. Sure. I thought it was really important to be able to talk to you a little bit about uh, the, the panel this morning, but also about some of the key themes that we've seen sort of emerge uh, this morning out of these discussions. Yes. So what would you say right now is the, the, the biggest theme, the biggest takeaway from this morning's sessions? Uh, for me, listening to both of the panels, I think was the topic that Monsignor Schlag brought up of subsidiarity. Because threaded throughout everything that we talked about this morning was the role of government or governments and the overreach that we are seeing, um, which then amplifies the sort of societal divisions, etc. So, so returning to a notion um, that society runs best when it, um, important issues are resolved kind of locally, you know, where families kind of run their own show and where, where local communities uh, support the families and then the larger communities support the smaller ones and so on. I think is, is, is a, an idea that we have to keep returning to because it's an always new idea, you know. Right. Yeah, and, and subsidiarity is such a key pillar of Catholic social teaching. I mean, that I have, as I'm watching these panels, we keep having recourse uh, to Catholic social teaching as, as something that really needs to be a bedrock uh, for not just principled entrepreneurship, but for building a really just society in the pursuit of the common Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So in terms of um, some of these other pillars then from Catholic social teaching, what, where do you see those fitting into uh, what a conference like this is trying to do? We're trying to show the way out of the mess we are in and it, and it is a mess yes you know, just yeah the, 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 um, the, the you, you're, you're sort of trying to navigate between the two dominant uh, ideologies right, that, that we live with uh, one that says that the kind of a libertarian um, let the market be free and everything will be taken care of which is which is just fundamentally false right? it, it has a elements of truth in it but fundamentally false in that the market doesn't create the conditions for the success of the market you know right. that those are created in families and schools and churches and so on you need a virtuous citizenry for a market economy to work right so that's the one but the other and that, that's a much much bigger danger now is and, and we don't use the word socialism or marxism enough but that's really what it is yes. you know is this this uh, atheistic vision that if we could just get the system right everything will work out beautifully, you know? Uh, and it's just so false, <laughs> and so historically evidently false. It's just, right. it makes you want to cry to think, like, when will you guys wake up and look around? Like, But if you don't teach good history, then people won't know it, and they'll continue to make the same mistake. Yeah, I mean, we're hearing today, well, it just wasn't really tried properly, uh, but yet it has failed every time it's been tried. Every, ver every version, you know? It's, it's um, it, the, the, the uh, you, you wonder, like, how do we keep falling into these same problems? And, and from a faith perspective, I think it's not unrealistic to say that there's something demonic going on here, you know, because how can so many people so regularly resort to the same mistakes? You know, it's like human beings aren't that stupid. You know? So there must yeah. be the kind of temptation going on b b behind that, I think. So. There seem to be a lot of uh, very close connections uh, that we're seeing in culture. In a way to pick up on something that Michael Novak built in his book on, on democratic capitalism, of, of the, the need for a democratic polity of a market system, but then also that moral culture. Yes. We're seeing kind of a mirror image of that uh, in woke capitalism, uh, in, in things like gender ideology. I mean, there, there seems to be a real counter to it Yes. Uh, that they're really trying to impose. The, the, uh, I, I will say, I, and I, I've, I've written on this, I don't like the word woke. I, I think right. it's a trap. In the same way the word capitalism was a trap. Right? Yes. But when, when your opponents make up the language, you shouldn't uh, not, like, take it on. Because the, the problem with the word woke is, to some people it means just being not racist. To others it means being Marxist. You know? So when, if, you say, if you say, I'm anti-Marxist, therefore I'm anti-woke, 
if you're anti-anti-racism, does that make you then a racist? You know, so I just rather say, look, it's really Marxist uh, economy that they're talking about here. Right. You know, and and we know that that's wrong. We know it doesn't work. So when you call it by what it is, it's more easy to. But but yes, it's it's um, we're opposing democracy with in effect totalitarianism, opposing a market economy with socialism, and opposing a moral culture cultural system with atheism. Right. Right. Um, and and. I think it was uh, Dr. Eberstadt who said the problem with the, so the the identity politics, you know, is that there's no redemption, right? If, if you're a white male, you're just bad, and that's it. There's nothing you do. You just go jump off a cliff, you know, just <laughs> right. or, or stay in the background, um, and and that's just not human, you know. The, yeah. the, the uh, um, racism is evil and it's vile, but you don't solve it by by dividing people against each other, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, in the uh, sort of the, the, the lines of intersection, which is what we hear a lot of now, uh, as you say, it, it, so much of it is, is racialist identity politics. Yeah. What's the antidote? I mean, clearly we're, we're hearing today uh, talking about democratic capitalism, but, but more importantly, sort of that transformation of culture. And, and we go back to subsidiarity. How do we apply that, though, in daily lives economically, but then also culturally? So... Um one of the panelists this morning, um, I think it was, uh, I think it was Rusty, uh, was talking about how um, you want um, entrepreneurs, right, who, who are uh, independent, independent thinkers, you know, but but also committed to serving others. Um, it, so, so in the end, it's not an ideology that saves you, right? It's good people or people trying to be good. Yes. And so that's very much what we try to do with the, the Bush School. That's what we're trying to form our students to be business leaders who say, I want to do good through business. Now, of course, you have to be profitable, otherwise you're not a business. And then you have to just stand in line to raise money with everybody right. else. You know? But, but a, a business is a, the only self-funding organization. Um, but it has to be ordered towards helping others. And so it, it, it's, it's important to have the ideological debate so that you can expose the fallacies. But in, in the end, what we hope for from a conference like this is that the CEOs in the audience leave and go, I'm affirmed in what I'm trying to do, and here's some ideas for doing even more. You know, uh, listening to Rob Hayes was delightful about how he's talking about how uh, going through the crisis, um, here's what he did to try to kind of stay sane himself, but also empower his, his management team, his employees, to help them grow in virtue, right? Yes. Through, through, this, through this catastrophe, yeah. Here we are uh, on the 40th anniversary of the release of, of the book, but we're also looking at terms like Catholic social teaching, uh, subsidiarity, to go back to rerum novarum as the, this fundamental blueprint for everything that's followed. Yes. How important is it for us as, as Catholics trying to bring about principled entrepreneurship to cherish, but really to apply all of the great Catholic social teachings as expressed in these social encyclicals? There's a real danger with Catholic social doctrine that people pick and choose quotes just to suit their own preferences or their policy preferences. Yeah. So uh, the, the Catechism for Business, which I co-authored years ago, it was really important to Joe Capizzi and I, the, my co-author, that we gave the kind of the all of the relevant quotes on, on each particular topic, starting with Rerum Novarum moving forward. Um, it, it's true there's development of doctrine, but it's only when you look at the, the social teaching in its totality that you realize, okay, this is, this is fundamental. So the right to private property is fundamental. Solidarity is fundamental. Subsidiarity is, su is fundamental. Markets are fundamental, you know. Um, and, and rather than cherry picking little bits here, you just say, okay, what, what are the real building blocks here right. that, that we, we have to follow or if we ignore we ignore at our peril yeah and it's important to stress isn't it uh, that in rerum novarum we have these condemnations of marxism we have the condemnations of socialism so that yeah this idea that somehow only in the modern era under john paul ii did we ever condemn these things but but when we go back it's very clear what we've taught well what's amazing about rerum novarum 1891 right so that's like a couple of decades, almost three decades before 1917, the, the, you know, the rise of the Soviet Union, was already saying this is a flawed system and it hadn't even <laughs> yeah. begun yet. Right? Right. So talk about not having been 
proven. You no, know, just, just a theory. Just a theory point. is yeah, bankrupt. Right. You know, he was he was seeing that. But we do have to look at it in its in its fullness. You know, so Monsignor Schlag made some reference to labor movements. Um, Rev Navarum was very strongly in favor of unions, right? Now, not the kind of unions we have right now, not certainly not the ones that that are kind of lean Marxist or atheist, you know, that have a sort of a platform, say a pro-abortion platform built in. That He was talking specifically about unions that would promote uh, labor welfare and solidarity, but also the religious welfare of, of laborers. You know, that, that was to be, he said that tr should, in fact, he asked for specifically Catholic unions that would, would have this sort of total picture. And he said, it's okay for Catholics to join non-Catholic unions if that's the best you could do. But it was a clear second best. And yeah. the real, the right way to do it was to have a sort of fully Catholic perspective. So now I think is a t it's always the right time, but now particularly to look at the full range of Catholic social doctrine and say we need to be in favor of all of that, not, not, not just cherry picking. Yeah. You know? Well, that's a great way to uh, conclude uh, this morning's sessions. Uh, Andrew Abella, uh, Dr. Andrew Abella, Dean of the Bush School at the Catholic University of America, uh, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure.